Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I have a question for you. Why have you been putting this off? What is this? What is this that you're talking about? This is anything. Why are you putting anything off? Today, we are going to talk about procrastination and perfectionism, and we can call it pee pee. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I don't know. I just thought of that in this moment. But honest to goodness, there are so many things that we struggle with as business owners and as entrepreneurs and as people, like not just business owners and, and um, people, just people. We struggle. Can I get some amens from people in the back that struggle with perfectionism and or procrastination and or both of them? Because I think they go hand in hand. And let's just talk a little bit about why we're putting stuff off. Let's just be real about it. Why? Because it is real. And whether we avoid our procrastination or talking about it, it it's typical, right? I mean, it's kind of just ironic that, that we're talking about that and how we, we'd like to avoid talking about it because we don't want to face our own realities. We all do it though. We all procrastinate in some sort of way. And we all tend to be a little bit overly perfectionistic in some aspects as well. So let's just talk about that because I think that there's some solutions and just some realities that we can have kind of a gut check for ourselves and realizing that like there's actually something we can do about it. There really is. So what are we going to do about it? First of all, we're going to recognize it and identify it because I think it's in the hidden places. We don't really recognize our perfectionism um, and unless like we, we hear it like this. So do you ever have any of these thoughts or these ideas that it's like um, anything less than perfection is failure, absolute failure. If I need help from other people, I must be weak. If I make a mistake in front of others, I will not be able to survive the humiliation. You fear humiliation in front of people for not things not going well. I do. Who doesn't do that? At least in some sort of form. If you look deep down, You'd be like, why would I be embarrassed to fail? Well, because people are watching, because people are expecting you to do well. And when you don't, it just gives them fuel to, I don't know, really ridicule you, something like that. I can't handle someone being upset with me. Mm, hidden perfectionism. Overestimations. Do you make any overestimations or assumptions? Oh my gosh. Although I spent many weeks researching that product bundle, I know it won't do well. Have you ever had that thought? I know it's just not going to do well. You're just assuming from the get-go that something's going to go wrong. Do you ever do that? How about my spouse, my sister, my mother-in-law, my brother will think I'm lazy if I take a couple sick days. I will be accused. I'm assuming I know how people think and feel. Or should statements. Have you ever heard these should statements? I should never come across as nervous or anxious. I should always be able to predict problems before they occur. Y'all, we have these thoughts, but they're not realistic in real life. It's our mind trying to tell us that we need to be perfect at something. Or what about those behaviors that we have that kind of reveal our perfectionism and also our procrastination, to be honest. Chronic procrastination is also a result or a symptom of trying to be perfect. How about difficulty completing your tasks or giving up so easily? Perhaps being constantly overly cautious about every little thing. Maybe going over an email for 30 minutes to make sure there's, there's no mistakes in it. Being a perfectionist is going to cost you. Have you ever really actually done anything perfect yet? Probably not, because we're not perfect people. If you're excessively checking and double checking and spending hours on things that maybe should take a lot less time, or you're constantly, constantly trying to improve by redoing things, just have a little gut check for a second. Be like, if you're thinking, yeah, 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 that's me. And you can identify a lot of these behaviors and a lot of these thoughts and a lot of these processes in your life. You are not alone. 
the good news is there's practical ways that you can push past perfectionism and procrastination and continue on your journey towards what you really, really want. Because I don't think you really, really want perfection. That's a really, really high standard to hold yourself to or to hold others to. Now, if you haven't heard of In a Perfect World, on your journey towards In a Perfect World, um, maybe you haven't been listening long enough. I wrote a book called Dream Big, Step Small. You can get it on my website. You can get, listen to it on Audible. You can get it from uh, Amazon Kindle. Um, we can send you a co signed copy, however you want. But in Chapter 3, we talk about this In a Perfect World scenario. You know, there's no such thing, of course. Nothing is ever going to be perfect. However, if you could design your life in some sort of way, you could say, in a perfect world, I would do this. I would be this. I would think this. I would act this way. I would have these things around me. I would have this much money. I would have this job. I would have this house, this lifestyle, this mindset. Creating your in a perfect world helps you to have realistic goals and expectations. If you've never done that before, I encourage you to get the book because we actually we actually go through that. You can design your in a perfect world and then close the gap from where you are to where you want to be. So if you don't have the book, grab the book and get that. And it walks you all the way through it, including step by step. You know me. I love step by steps. I love to give you practical things that you can do to close the gap. Y'all, there's gaps in our life everywhere. We strive for perfectionism because we're scared of failure. We procrastinate because we're scared to be perfect and no, we can't be. It's just the cycle, but we don't have to stay in it. There are practical ways to get out of the cycle that we're in and to move forward. To move forward slower and with more peace. So get Dream Big, Step Small and read Chapter 3 in a Perfect World. But part of moving towards your in a perfect world is letting go of the fact that everything has to be perfect. We can enjoy life when things aren't perfect. Hello, COVID. We were able to somehow get through a global pandemic and yes there's consequences on the other side and there's ramifications and we're all living through that as well but there was a time where we thought oh my gosh this could ruin us we're making it through dr elizabeth scott said this perfectionists perfectionists actually achieve less than those with healthier attitudes because their focus on perfection robs them of motivation and can bring on procrastination and other self-defeating behaviors. Wow. We achieve less when we're trying to be perfect because we're focusing on the wrong thing. If that's you, we've got some solutions here. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly here, but I really just want you to take a couple notes and just be reminded that there is help. If you're resonating with this and you're like, yes, this is me. I tend to be a perfectionist and then procrastinate and then the cycle is this crazy hamster wheel I can't seem to get off. First thing you need to do is set realistic expectations. In the world of perfectionism, we set extremely high standards for ourselves and then we are extremely critical when we don't meet those. That is crazy pants, y'all. Let me set my bar so high that I actually can't reach it. And when I don't reach it, I'm going to beat myself up about it and then not do anything. Hmm. Doesn't sound very healthy, does it? This can then trigger this cycle of procrastination when this leads to meeting more beating up of yourself and eventually, usually quitting. Which, I don't know about you, but that's not something I want to be. I don't want to be a quitter. You can pivot, you can change, you can grow, you can move forward. But quitting is a sign that you've just got too overwhelmed and thrown in the towel too hard, not doing it, right? Procrastination is a sign of fear. Now, do you identify with any of these? I'm putting this off till I have more information. I can't get it all done in the short amount of time I have, so why start? Um, it's going to take forever, so why bother? I won't be good at it. Really? Have we ever done any of these things? I've said a lot of this stuff. It's going to take forever, so why bother? That's probably the one I'm most guilty of. 
oh my gosh, it's going to take me forever to learn that, to do that, to get there, to arrive to that place. I'm so far from that. So why even bother? Well, the reality is because you still want it. That's why bother. Don't let hard stand in the way of your dreams. It's going to be hard. Just embrace it. Embrace it knowing that smaller steps make it a little easier. Be realistic. Set goals and measure them by time, effort, and resources. Just a, several episodes back, we talked about setting goals in a realistic way. Go back, sit down with a pen and paper, and write down some of those things. Just a few minutes of notes Realist, about setting realistic goals. Measure them in a time frame that matters. Use your resources and your effort. You can't expect 100% growth if you're only putting in 20% of the work. That's not realistic. Things get easier over time with practice. It's like exponential growth. In the beginning, you see this slow line of, I'm not doing anything, not doing anything. But as you're still working, as you're still putting in efforts, all of a sudden, that needle starts to go up and up and up. Your efforts will be realized. They're just not instant. In a world where we have instant gratification and Instagram and Insta everything, we need to have real expect realistic expectations that life is not instant. It takes time to grow something of value. Just let that sink in for a moment. What are you chasing of, that has value? It's worth the effort. It's worth the effort. You're worth the effort. Your dreams, your hopes, your goals, your peace, your joy, your contentment. It's worth the effort. But it takes effort. Step two, step really small. When I say really small, I mean really small. Focus on small accomplishments to keep your fuel, keep the fuel going for your fire. You have a fire, you have something you want, you have something you desire. Step really small. Perfectionists tend to set goals of unreasonable excellence with no learning curve. Tell me something. Would you expect that from someone else? Maybe a child, maybe a grandchild, a spouse, someone that's learning something brand new that maybe you've mastered. Would you really say, come on now, you should have this by now. I expect you to be from here to here in three months. Would you really have those expectations of other people? Yet you put them on yourselves, why? Be kind to yourself, especially when you're learning something new. This is not a race. Instead, you can reduce a lot of your stress by changing your goals and changing the way you approach your goals. You set bite-sized steps for yourself and reward yourself when you achieve them you will get there faster and you will be more forgiving of your mistakes. If you step small, you fail small and you can correct it before it's too big to conquer. Example is like, okay, if you want to get into better shape and you want to work out and this is a lot of time of year at the end of the year, people start thinking about these things. And, you know, if you're not willing to do the work, you won't see the result. I mean, when you're first starting out something, setting a goal, you know, like I know we all have, most of us have some sort of health goals or maybe weight loss goals or maybe building muscle, do something for our health. I know at 40 plus, you know, I'm not getting any younger and I want to take care of the body that I have so it lasts as long as God allows it to last. <laughs> and part of that is taking care of myself. Um, but like if you want to get in better shape or lose weight or something like that, you could set a goal. Like getting better in shape. I'm going to work out five days a week. Well, y'all, if I don't work out any at all, is working out five days a week from zero 
realistic. Think about your life. Think about your lifestyle. Think about everything that needs to change. Yes, we make changes, but small changes are easy to adapt to. If you're not used to working out and you go in all in head first five days a week, you might get sore and it's a quick change and you might get super sore and perhaps just give up and be like, oh, I can't work out now because it hurts so bad and no pain, no gain is really not what we want. So how about right now I exercise zero times a week. And so how about two times a week? That's two out of seven days that I can take a 30 minute walk or even a 15 minute walk. And maybe after two weeks, then I'll add another day or a few more minutes because progress is still progress, even if it's slow. It's still progress. It's still moving in the right direction, even if it's slow. I mean, who put it on us that we have to do everything fast? Is this society? Is it our own mind? Is it our own shame or our own guilt or our own expectations of perfectionism no you get to set the rules for you and we don't have to be perfect but in one year's time do you want to make the same new year new year's resolutions that you make every single year and then don't get to them most people just give up they're like forget it i'm not even sending resolutions i don't want to make any changes because i know i'm not going to stick to them y'all that's me but instead, I'm going to make the change to do things really, really small. Really small. Instead of thinking, oh my gosh, I don't really eat a whole lot of fruits and vegetables and I want to be a lot healthier. I'm going to say, okay, what's one fruit I can pick today and one vegetable I can pick today? Not feeling like you have to go all in or nothing. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. We can be kind to ourselves and take one step at a time. If we treated ourselves the way we treat our bestie, our best friend, someone we really, really respect and love and care about, we would be far better people. So why don't we do that? Really could consider treating yourself a little bit better, letting yourself be realistic about your expectations and stepping really really small because time is going to pass anyway so you can either take a year to get to your goal or try to rush through it in three months and then give up and then quit and then try something else and then come back to it later your goals can change sure but a lot of them they, they don't they don't we have a lot of the same goals and if we don't achieve them we might still want them and if they do change that's great Life changes, circumstances change, emotions change, relationships change, all kinds of stuff. But in reality, a lot of our goals are still the same. What we want in our lives. Okay, number three, to stop being perfectionistic, stop procrastinating, stop doing all these things, stop making assumptions. Yep, I said that. How about small steps are not good enough. I must perform at XYZ level. We just talked about stepping really small. But do you ever feel like gut check of like, small steps aren't good enough. I've got to get there faster. I must perform at XYZ level. Or what? First of all, it's not good enough for who? For you? Why? For your mother? For your father? For your spouse? For someone else? Who decides for you? What's good enough and what's not? And why are you measuring it and how? Do you know for a fact that someone else is judging you or thinking about you? Do they say that? If they do, that's definitely an issue. But nine out of time, 10 times, you assume that people are thinking about you and judging you. But let me tell you this. People care more about themselves than you. I promise. I'm not saying people don't care about you. I'm saying that a lot of times we're thinking, if I do this, someone's going to think I'm a bad mom. If I don't volunteer at the school, people think I'm gonna, uh, that I'm a lazy schmuck, and that I don't care about my kid or my, my kid's education. But let's be honest. If there's someone, if the teacher or my mother-in-law or someone else wants to think I'm a bad mom because I don't volunteer at the school, 
So what if they think that? You don't have to prove yourself to anyone. You know you're a good person. You know you have priorities that are in order. And choosing your own priorities and choosing what is best for you and your family is none of anybody else's business. And if they judge you, that's on them. Really, it is. Would you rather keep that judgmental person happy than yourself? Is their happiness with you more important than your happiness with you? Let that sink in for a moment. Are you going to change who you are if someone else doesn't like you? Or someone else doesn't like what you're doing? Are you going to adjust your goals and priorities because someone else rejects your ideas? Here's a reality check for you. If someone has a negative thought about you or judges you for what you say or you do or your priorities, it's none of your business. There, that's a reflection on them. Instead of this isn't good enough, how about I have put a lot of time into this and I'm giving it my best. Can y'all just say that? Say that to yourselves. Instead of this isn't good enough, say I am giving my best at the level that I'm at and I've put X amount of time in and that's something I can be proud of. Tell me, when's the last time you said you were proud of yourself for something? Send me a DM. I want to hear that you're proud of yourself or something. Say it out loud. Own it. And especially if it's someone, something that someone else in your life doesn't agree with or, doesn't, or has judged you for. You can still be proud of yourself. You can still be you. You can unsubscribe to anyone else's judgmental thoughts anytime. It's not my business. I'm sorry you think that. That's usually a reflection on them, not you. You don't have to care. You really don't. I know I'm a very emotional and sensitive person and I'm also a people pleaser. So I'm speaking to myself, not just you. I say all these things also for me. I need to hear it again. I need to believe it again. That someone else's opinion really doesn't matter. That I'm doing what's best for me and my family and my children and my well-being. And if someone doesn't like that, they don't have to like it. Just like they don't have to like Crocs. Like, if you don't have to like Crocs. Some people love them, some people hate them. Doesn't really matter, does it? If you think Crocs are ugly, don't wear them. But half the world doesn't care if you think they're ugly because they love them. There's like Crocs and not Crocs. There's usually not a tweener. You either love them or hate them, right? <laughs> it's the same kind of thing. We can have the same opinion about what people think about our parenting or our religious beliefs, or our finances, or what we're doing with our lives, or our time, or our business, or our health. None ya. None ya business. And you don't have to say that out loud. You can say, oh, thank you for sharing your thoughts. But assuming that you know someone's thoughts and then editing yourself because you assume they think this, that's crazy pants. It really is. Think about that for just one more second. Just one more second. Changing your goals or your priorities because someone else is offended or doesn't like it or does or is judging it is crazy pants. That's allowing someone else who doesn't walk in your shoes and live in your circumstances and love the people you love and serve the people you serve and have been through what you've been through, dictating what you can say, do, think, or be because they don't like it. They're not you and they never have to walk in your shoes. So although some opinions carry weight because we love and respect people, at the end of the day, it's up to you to decide what's best for you. And there's lots of people that aren't going to like it. And most people keep that to themselves. And if they don't, you can set boundaries around that. You certainly can. All right, number four, how to get out of this perfectionist procrastination cycle is learn to handle feedback and criticism in a realistic way.
learning to handle feedback because just like we're talking about assumptions if someone actually gives you feedback you have to acknowledge it we do not have to accept feedback or criticism from someone who's not in the game so if someone's talking about your business and they don't know about your business and they've never been in business their opinion has no weight you ever hear someone talking about maybe like a football game or some sort of something and they've never played and they don't really understand it, they don't even watch the sport and yet they're throwing all kinds of criticisms at it like they know what you're talking about what do you do about people's opinions about that you blow them off right you're like Ugh, that person has no idea what they're saying they're a hockey fan they don't watch football they don't know it's not like a bad thing it's just like we don't take advice from people that aren't in the game their criticism their feedback is irrelevant because they're not doing what you're doing they're not understanding in a way that you're understanding. And another thing I'm gonna say, life is not a damn race. It's not a competition and there's not a bunch of comparisons and no one cares. And when they say no one cares, we assume that a lot of people care unless they say something. Who's measuring? Who are you trying to impress? What is your goal and why is it your goal? If someone's not in the game, they don't get a say so. Their opinion doesn't write you a check or pay your bills. It's not that relevant. Consider the source of the feedback. If it's, some, if it's someone that's knowledgeable in the subject matter and the area, and they're coming from a place of love and help and service, then absolutely lean in and listen because we all need feedback. We all need feedback. Criticism comes from a place of distaste, disgust, jealousy, comparison, haughtiness, arrogance. Feedback comes from a place of grace and kindness and servanthood and love. I love you. I see this in your life. I see how it's destroying you. Here's how you might be able to make a change in this area. That sounds much different than, wow, you're really losing it with this Amazon business thing, aren't you? It's not really going that well for you, huh? How's that working out for you? That's, do you see the difference? Criticism versus feedback. If it's someone that's in the game and a good source, then learn from it. You can't change if you don't try, and it starts with awareness. Sometimes we do have blinders. And God puts people in our lives to kind of see the things that we can't always see on our own. But that comes, if it doesn't come from a place of love and help and servant and hey, let's link arms and walk together, then dismiss it because then it comes from an opposite place. The other thing is, if you do receive some criticism and feedback that maybe is negative or pointing out some mistakes that you did make or, or you're doing it to yourself, the question is, did you die though? Did you die? No one ever died from being criticized. I'm not saying it doesn't have damaging consequences. I'm not saying it doesn't hurt and there's not a place for that. Criticism kills nothing but our self-esteem and our ego. But honestly, the question is, who are you trying to impress and for what reason and why and where? Are you trying to impress people that actually really don't care? Instead, look to be the best version of yourself and that light will shine through to anyone who's looking. Y'all, the question remains. How are we going to get out of this perfectionism and this procrastination and putting things off? We put things off because we're afraid. Afraid of someone or something or ourselves. Fifth way to really beat that is to focus on the process. Learning to enjoy not just the result, but the steps you're taking to get there. Progress over perfection. 
Are you moving? Are you working? Are you planning? Do you have realistic goals and expectations? What is the process? If we're always focused on the result that we're going to get once we finally arrive somewhere, we're going to be miserable people. If we're not enjoying the process and the journey and reflecting on the fact that we are walking a path, a path that we want to be on. And if you're not walking a path you want to be on, that's a whole nother conversation. Hit me up. We can talk about it. I don't just consult about business and about Amazon. It's about your journey. It's about what do you really want? And are you empowered to take steps to go in that direction? Focusing on the process keeps you at peace and happy and content every day. If we're constantly, constantly waiting and hoping for a result, the process is going to feel like drudgery. Will I ever get there? All I do is take these steps. All these do is take these steps. When you realize that once you, if, if you're only taking steps and finally waiting for that big thing, and you don't actually enjoy the growing pains and the process of, of learning new things and conquering small steps, by the time you get to the top of whatever mountain you're climbing, is it really going to be worth it? If you only enjoy the moment when you're at the top, it's not worth it. Enjoying the journey and learning in the process is all part of the experience of finally reaching a goal. Focus on the process of getting there, wherever you are. Being content and happy that you did check something off your list today, because today's all we have. We want to plan for the future. We want to make sure that we're looking and having realistic goals and working towards something. But it's not just about getting to the top of that mountain. It's enjoying the trees and the scenery and the bumps in the road and the detours and the roadblocks along the way. Because it's not just about where you're going to arrive. Because let's be real, until we're dead, <laughs> we are always going to be on some sort of journey. And if you're only enjoying the arrival to that journey, then you've missed most of it. You've missed most of it. And if you're scared to journey because of all the long, hard road that you're going to travel, it's easier to focus on the process because then you're not constantly just focused on, oh, when I arrive, when I arrive, when I arrive. Because to be honest, I've set a lot of goals in my life that when I thought I arrived to, I'd be like, I thought I was going to feel and think a certain way when I re or reached this milestone. And reality was, I didn't feel that or think that after all. Instead, I realized that I could have felt that way the entire time. Looking at each day as part of the journey instead of, I have 365 days to get to XYZ. It's never going to be a straight line. It's always going to be a roller coaster with twists and turns and roadblocks and all kinds of different things. And the faster that we accept that and learn that, the easier our goals will be to achieve and more fun and more exciting. Life is not always going to be sunshines and rainbows, but did you die? Nope. Bumps, bruises, scrapes. Yep. We're still here. We're still moving. We have a lot to contribute. You have a lot to contribute to yourself, to your family, to the world. Don't let perfectionism hold you back from contributing what you're going to contribute to the world. The world needs what you've got. Holding it back is a disservice to yourself and others. Your product, your business, your words, your love, your services. Someone needs what you've got. 
So let's go back over those really quickly and just remind ourselves to get out of the procrastination and the perfectionism that we put on ourselves and move forward. Setting realistic goals was number one. Realistic expectations for yourself, just like you would for your bestie. How would you talk to her or him? Talk to yourself that way. Set goals for yourself like that. Get in a perfect world from Dream Big, Step Small. Chapter three, reread it, redefine it, rewrite it. Step two, step really, really small. Small accomplishments keep us motivated. Really small. It's putting another log on the fire to keep it burning. We don't just pile it up and make it really big. Just keep the fire burning one small step at a time. Don't make assumptions about yourself or others. What is true? Trust what is true. Trust the facts, not the feelings. Trust the facts. Don't make assumptions. If you don't know, ask. When don't ask if you don't care. Learn to accept that feedback or that criticism or whatever that is only from people who are in the game and people that matter most to you. Don't edit yourself because someone else doesn't like what you're doing. Learn from mistakes. Learn from feedback. Decide what your goal is and why and own it. You owe no one an explanation. And finally, focusing on the process, the steps that you're taking, focusing on the process and not the arrival, the journey, enjoying little things along the way. Hey, I learned something new today. Wow, I made this mistake, but I corrected it and I'm excited about it. I hit a roadblock today, but it caused me to think differently and I can acknowledge and be thankful even for the roadblocks along the journey. The arrival is never gonna get you what you want. It's all about the steps you're taking to get there. You're building yourself into a better and different person on the journey. And by the time you arrive there, you've stored up for yourself lessons and joy and and um, all kinds of scenery that you've picked up along the way. It's not just about arrival. Focus on the process. So if you've been dealing with your own perfectionistic thoughts and your own procrastination and putting things off, you're not alone in that. Take a book, take a chapter, take a book, take one of these and focus on that. Learn how you can sprinkle more peace and more joy and more contentment in your life by doing one of these things. Maybe it's letting go of assumptions. Maybe it's setting more realistic expectations or literally saying, you know what? This week, this day, this month, this year, I'm just going to focus on the process. I'm going to enjoy the steps of the process and not be so focused on a result that it steals all of my joy. So here I am wishing you joy and peace and contentment and progress one step at a time y'all thank you so much for listening to this show i know that you could be listening to other things you could be doing anything else with your time right now and i thank you for giving me a little piece of it i hope it's encouraged you to take some better steps forward and we'll see you same time same place next week on the amazon files